Now that we can display it on screen, let's set up our point system. Let's reopen the object ball and select the outside room event. First we need to determine which side of the screen the ball has gone off of. That way we know who to give the point to. So come over to control and test variable. Drag that above the jump to start position and we are going to test to see if the variable x is less than zero, which will mean that it has gone off the left side of the screen. Click OK. If that is the case, then orange should get a point. So now we select the set variable, drag that underneath our test variable, and we will look for the variable global dot orange score value of one and relative. So this is basically adding one to the orange score. Click OK. Since there are only two sides of the screen the ball can go off of, we can just put in an else action to test to see if it has gone off the other side of the screen. So drag that above the jump to position and drag in another set variable. Make sure it is underneath the else and we will give this a variable global dot blue underscore score set it to one and relative click OK. Now I mentioned this in an earlier video but since conditional actions only deal with the action directly beneath them we don't have to concern ourselves with these other actions being triggered by the condition meaning that regardless of which side of the screen it goes off of the ball will jump back to its start position and reset its alarm. So let's test this. And as the ball goes off, we can see that the score automatically updates. But it also just keeps going, so we need to set a cap at which point one player or the other will win. So let's set our maximum score to be three. So once you've scored three points, you win. Starting with going off to the left. If the ball's x is less than zero, then we give it a point. But now we need to determine also whether or not that has set the orange score to three. Because if it has, then orange will have one. Well, this is going to require several actions attached to this condition. So we are going to use these blocks over here in the other category underneath the control tab. Drag the start block above the set variable global orange score and one beneath it. So you can see it sort of indented all the actions here. And like I was saying before, that is indicating that everything inside these blocks is being treated as the one action that is attached to the condition. So we can have multiple actions between these blocks that will all be dependent on whether or not the ball has gone off the left side of the screen. So after a point has been scored by orange, let's see if the score is equal to three. We do that just by bringing in another test variable action right underneath the score variable, and we will test for the variable global dot orange underscore score, give it a value of three and equal to. So it is going to see if orange score is equal to three. Click OK. A few actions are going to be attached to this condition as well, so let's drag in some more blocks so that now we have a set inside of the other set underneath our test variable, and inside this we are going to set up the following actions. Come over to the main two tab, and in the info category we want this little speech bubble display message. Drag that in between our blocks and we'll give it the message orange wins. What the display message action basically does is brings up a little pop-up window with the message that we just typed. It's not really the preferred way of doing this. It would probably be better if we actually took the player to a win screen or a lose screen, but since we haven't set that up yet, we'll just shortcut it by using a message. We also want the room to reset. We can do that by coming over to main one and down in the rooms category we are looking for the restart room action which has the little arrow pointing up 
inside of the room. Drag that over and make sure it's underneath the display message. And now we need to set up a condition so that if the score is not equal to 3, it'll just reset the ball's position. So come back to control, select else, and put it underneath this inner block. So basically we're saying that if it is equal to 3, then do all this. Otherwise, we'll bring in some more blocks. And we want it to do this jump position and reset the alarm. So let's just drag these up inside of this block. So to recap, as soon as the ball goes outside of the room, it will then stop moving in any direction. Then it will test to see if x is less than 0, meaning if it has gone off the left side of the room. If that is true, then it will set the variable global orange score to 1. Then it will see if that score is equal to 3. If it is, then it will display the message orange wins and reset the room. Otherwise, it'll move the ball back to its beginning position and reset its alarm. That alarm will then trigger a random direction as well as reset the speed of our object. And now that I think about it, we actually need another jump to start at the beginning of the display message. Because what will happen is if the ball goes outside the room, it will just keep going outside the room and will continue to trigger this orange score plus one, meaning that the orange's score will continue to go up. The problem that will arise from that then is that orange's score will no longer equal three, meaning that we will not trigger the condition that will win the game and the ball will just keep going. By resetting the position of the ball, we should hopefully avoid that problem. So let's test it. And I will endeavor to let the ball go out. And orange wins. However, we see that our orange score has not updated. It's saying that orange has won when there's only a number two being displayed. The reason that's happening is because the actions here where the score is being added to and determined to be equal to three is happening before the draw event can be updated. In Game Maker, certain things happen before others because of the coding priority behind the scenes. So what we're going to have to do is set up a little bit of a delay. Fortunately, this isn't too difficult. We'll just use another timer and alarm system. So let's go to Add Event, Alarm, Alarm 1. And what we're going to put in here from our outside room event is this display message and restart current room. So let's just right click and cut those out of there, come back to our alarm one and paste them in here. And now let's go back to our outside room event and then inside of these blocks that we just removed them from, we're going to come back to main two and set the alarm, drag that above the jump to position and we'll give it five steps set to alarm one. Click OK. So now what'll happen is that once the ball goes out, it will add one to the score. Then it will determine if it is equal to three. If it is, then it will set alarm one to five steps, which is just a fraction of a second, but it will be long enough for the draw event to update. Then once this alarm triggers, it will display that winning message and restart the room. So let's try that. And get out of the way, there we go. Okay, so now we see that it did in fact update to three and then gave us the winning message and now it resets the room. So let's do this again real quick to set up the blue. We'll come back to our outside room Instead of doing all this by hand, I'm just going to select all of this by shift clicking, right click, copy, and then come down underneath the else and paste. We are going to have an extra little set variable blue score at the end. We can go ahead and delete that. And then we have to come in here and change all the things that we pasted. 
So the first thing we need to change is this set variable global orange score. Open that up by double clicking on it and instead of orange score we need this to be blue score. Click OK. Then we need to come down to this test variable and again change orange to blue. Click OK. We also don't want it resetting alarm 1 because alarm 1 sets the wind message for blue. So what we're going to do is come over to the alarm 1 event, right click it, duplicate it, and we are going to set it to an alarm 2. We then need to change the message by double clicking on it and change orange to blue. Click OK. Let's come back to our outside room event, come back down to these things, and now instead of alarm 1, we need to change this to alarm 2. Click OK. So that should work. Let's test it. We know that the orange already works, so we don't have to test that. We can just test the blue one this time around. And blue wins. OK, so the game works. And I apologized if that seemed a little rushed, a little bit confusing. So one last time, let me go over everything that is happening here. When the ball is outside the room, it will then stop moving in any direction and set the speed to zero. It will then test to see if the ball has gone off the left side of the room. If it has, then it will set the orange score to plus one, meaning that it will just add one to the score. Then it will test to see if the score is equal to three. If it is, it will set our alarm to five to give us a little bit of breathing room so that the draw event can update the score on the screen. It will reset the position of the ball. When these five steps or five frames have gone, then alarm one will trigger. It will display the message orange wins and restart the room. If the score is not equal to three, then it will just reset the position of the ball and reset that ball's alarm, which is zero, to 30, basically giving us that second before it restarts the direction and the speed that we had set up several videos ago. But that's all if it only goes off the left side of the screen. Otherwise, we are assuming that it has gone off the right side of the screen, in which case it will basically do everything in opposite for the blue player. It will set the blue score to 1, then it will see if it is equal to 3. If it is equal to 3, then it sets alarm 2 to 5 and resets the ball's position. Alarm 2, once it triggers, gives us the message blue wins and then resets the room. If blue's score is not equal to 3, then it resets the position of the ball and resets its alarm so that we have that second before the direction and the speed are reset. And that's really all there is to it. Even though this seems like a lot to take in, if you just break it down step by step, it can be easier to manage and it makes it easier to see what is going on each step of the way. So we can click OK to close the window and now we actually have a complete finished game. It has a scoring system, it allows each player to win, and it will reset the game when the game is over. But let's face it, you're going to have a hard time finding someone to sit at your keyboard with you and play Pong. So now let's take our game one step further, and in the next video we'll set up a basic computer opponent.